my name is Vance, and I'm one of our passionate support team members here. And I would like to thank everybody for coming out and joining my webinar on five ways to use Marquee Plus pages. Um, hopefully, I can give you guys a bunch of, of helpful information on some cool and, and new ways to go about using your Marquee Plus page for your store and or your blog. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started now. Some of the things that we're, we're going to cover are listed here. So what we're going to be covering, uh, banner items, banner item slideshows, HTML content, list items, and text content. These are what I feel are some of, of the greatest features of the Marquee Plus page, and I'd like to go ahead and show you guys some of what they can do for you. So we'll start off with the banner item. Uh, some of the, of the great things about the banner item, uh, one, there's no resizing needed anymore. So before we always had to use a certain image size to upload to the banner. Now you're able to choose a image focal point. Um, so you can choose like a certain section of the image to put as your banner, which uh, we will get to that here in a second. You have one click to switch slideshow options, so it's very easy to come in and change anything. Uh, there's not really there's no really complications in if you want to make it a slideshow or if you just want to make it a banner item it's really really easy to do it only takes a couple of seconds uh, in of course easy to use gallery controls you see the image there at the bottom there are the gallery controls which the arrow is pointing to you can go left or right with it or you can pause it so your, your clients have the ability to go through there and navigate through that banner slideshow as well As I was talking about before, this is the image focal point. So this is the section where you know you can see the image I uploaded is much much larger than what's displaying. This focal point, you can choose what section of the image that you want to show up in the banner, and it's going to cut that section of the image and put it in the banner for you. So this is a, a very useful time saver that saves you from having to go through Photoshop and resize the image. Next up, we have the banner item slideshow. So this is what we covered uh, kind of in, in the beginning there, of the, you know, the one click to switch options. You can see here you have the autoplay slideshow. So you can choose it to uh, play or, or not to. Right now, because I only had one image up there, of course, I had it set to uh, not, so it would not flash through it. You can also randomize it. One of the great things about the randomizing feature is for people who want to put a lot of images up there, this kind of takes out the need for that. You have the ability to upload between five and ten images, and you can randomize it so that it's not the same order of images every time. So it really helps you to kind of cut down on how many images you're putting up there for your image count. You have the following controls here. So this is the section where you can adjust which slideshow um, controls you want to show up. The play, pause arrows, captions, and thumbnails. Um, now to kind of get rid of any confusion, the thumbnails section is not really a small thumbnail of the image. For right now, what we have are just the little circles. And I'll go back a couple slides here so you can see. If you look in the bottom right-hand corner underneath the image, you see those two circles there. Those are the thumbnails. So you can go through there and click on those as needed to adjust um, how many images are in the slideshow. Next is the banner height. So this goes you know, almost hand in hand with, with, that, with that image focal point. So the banner height can be anything between 100 and 500 pixels. And that's going to be completely up to you and how you want to size it, how, how you want the appearance to be on your um, web page. I would say a good standard height and what the height's always been is between 325 and 350 pixels. That's a, a good size to stay in. Of course, you can make it all the way up to 500 pixels and all the way down to 100. Then for the banner item slideshow, we also have the transitions. So you have the whole list of slideshow trans transitions there, and you can also adjust the speed. Um, as, as you can see here, the speed is going to go in seconds. You can adjust it all the way between one second transitions to 10 second transitions. Um, th this really comes in handy whenever you know you go back to, to saving images and how many images you're going to have up there. If you set it to a slower amount, and the images are going to scroll through slower. You don't really need to put as many images up there uh, and take away from your, your image count as you would, so you can dedicate those images elsewhere. Next up, we have the HTML content section. Um, 
I really wanted to touch on this just because it's, it's definitely part of the page, and I feel like a lot of people see this section, and they kind of get scared of it because they, th they think they have to be some HTML guru and know all this stuff about computers, and in reality, you don't. Um, we've made it very user-friendly to use, and there's some great sites that give you very user-friendly HTML code, so you can really take advantage of this section here and really, you know, giving that, that extra touch of, uh, of custom, customizability to your website. Um, User-friendly size adjustments. So you have there at the very bottom, you have the width and the height. So the, the as wide as it can be, the maximum width is 1,000 pixels, and the height can really go on um, for a, as much room as needed. Um, works with any HTML code, uh, and, and just some things that you might not know about HTML code. Any kind of embed code, like Facebook plugins, YouTube videos, Vimeo videos, Animoto slideshows, um, even you know buttons from places like Wedding Wire. Those are all. That's all HTML code which you could put in this section. So all you have to really do is just copy the code, put it in the section, and of course hit the save changes at the bottom, and you're going to get something like this. So as you can see here, I just you know took the the Facebook code that Facebook gives you automatically, which you can see by going to developers dot Facebook.com. That's where you can get all kinds of social plugins that will definitely work well with your, uh, with your PhotoBiz like page. And of course, I also put a, a video in here as well. I'm not going to go too, too much in depth into HTML just because um, it, that's going to be a completely different subject. If you would like to learn a whole lot more about it, uh, Jeffrey actually just did a webinar on basic HTML coding, which you can go to our YouTube channel to see, which is listed there, and it's youtube.com forward slash photobiz. Um, and a website that, that's really, it's coding made easy. It's what I use all the time. It's also listed at the bottom. It's w3schools.com. De definitely ch uh, check them out. They'll, they have pretty much all the code built there for you. Just, it's all copying and pasting. Next up, we have list items. Um, the list items are pretty complex in as far as what you can use them for. Um, a, a couple of the key features you can use them for, you can use them to run aggressive sale campaigns. So if you are running specials on certain products or if you're running a, you know, like a service special, a, a sitting fee special, then you can use these list items to specifically target people to link them there from the go. As soon as they come to your homepage, if it's a Marquee Plus page, you'll have those list items on the, the side, which I'll show you here in, in a minute, and you can link people directly to those, which is a great way to help drive traffic throughout your website and continue that linking process. You can link to hidden pages, so you have the ability to hide pages from your menu but still have them visible, which we'll go over in a second. And you can also link to individual pages and external websites. So there's really not a limit on where you can link people to from the marquee plus page list items. This is, this is going to go over, so after you would hit add item, this is the, the page that's going to come up. Um, and you can use this. This is, of course, the title, the description. You can choose where to link to and the image. So after you hit add item, you, you're going to give it a title. This is the title that's going to show up on the main page. So you're really going to want to describe whatever the page is. You can also put a, a small description in there, so you'll be able to um, kind of tell people where they're clicking to, or if you want, you can, of course, put an image in there, or however you feel necessary to, to drive traffic. And then here's where the linking comes into play. So link to a web page. You can either just have it um, not link anywhere and just have it as a, a picture there on the side. You can choose from a list of your pages. You can provide an external website address, or you can use an embedded link. So you could even put something in there, like uh, you know, like a, a button from uh, PPA, or um, even a, a video or something there. So th there's really a lot that you can do with that as well. What I've done um, is I've chosen to link to a hidden page. So what I did is I chose from my list of pages, and I chose my automotive products page. So Whenever somebody clicks on that specific link, it's going to link them to my automotive products page. 
and this is how you, you make a, a page hidden. So you have a couple of different options there. You have visible, you have hidden, and disabled. The, the visible, of course, is going to make the page show up on the menu. Disabled is going to turn it off completely. Hidden is going to hide it from the menu, but still leave that direct page link active so people can still access that page directly. So in, in turn, what, what I've done is I've, you know, I've got all these links set up, and my menu is not crowded, and people are still getting to link to specific areas. Um, a little bit more into to hidden pages and some neat ideas of what you can do with it. One of my favorite things that, that I've seen with the hidden pages is I was working with a, a customer, and she was using QR code specials, which are, are the codes that people can scan from their phones, and it takes them to a specific web address. So she was actually using a hidden page, generating a QR code for that, and people would scan it and link them through to her specials page. So that's just a, a kind of a neat idea of a different way that you could use a page w within your store. So this is what the links are going to look like. You have the home page there, and there, you have many different layouts you can choose. You can have them show up on the right side, the left side, across um, the bottom. You know, so you're not limited to just one layout with this. So of course you have the title there, which will be you know wedding specials. You have the image, and then you have the little description that I put in there. So that's kind of how it's going to display within the link box. And the last thing that we're going to go over today is the text content section. So this is really an overlooked feature of the Marquee Plus page. Most people see this and they, they think that it's just going to be a place where they just put in some text, which, I mean, it, it, it definitely is. It's what you want to use to market yourself. It's what you want to use to describe the page. And even you can use it to describe anything that you've embedded below, like any videos or any kind of social plugins or anything. One of the, the great features of it, um, if you look in the image there, I'm sorry I didn't have a, I actually didn't put an arrow pointing to it, the fifth item over right beside the HTML square is a little table symbol that has the pencil with it. One of the, of the great things with the text content section is you can build tables. So after you uh, work with the table button, this is what's going to come up. You can, of course, choose the columns and rows. Uh, I've right now for, for this, I've just put uh, two columns and one row so I can just do two uh, straight columns of text. So kind of like a, a magazine or something will be laid out. Then you have the cell padding and cell spacing, which is going to be the difference in size between two different cells. So it's going to show you how much space you're going to have between them and how thick that space is going to be. For alignments, you have three, three different choices. You can left align, center align, or right align. Then you have the border. Uh, for border points, zero is going to show no border, um, and you can just go up from there to make the border line thicker and thicker depending on what number you choose. And the width and the height. I have 1,000 by 400 in here right now. Probably a good size to stick with for all of the pages. I would recommend starting out at a 500 width by 300 height. That way it's going to take up a reasonable amount of the text content section, but not leave it to where it's stretching out across the entire page. So you still have room to include more text with that as well. Next in the, the tables, we have the advanced tab. This is also one of the great features of this, is you have the ability to kind of put some colors in the table. So you could put a different background in there and you can put a different border color. So if you did want to run a border, um, you can either use the color picker there, the little square box, you can select that and choose from colors. Or if you have a specific color that you like and you know the hex code for it, you have the ability to put the hex code in that white rectangle there. So you have the ability to make it a border color or to change the background without having to go into the color picker and adjust any extra colors. This is what it's going to appear like after you insert it. Um, I don't have any border, so these dotted lines are just there to represent the spacing in between the two cells. It's not going to appear up on the actual website. So you can type in each column 
and you can kind of see how all the text is going to justify itself. And of course, you can always go back into the table icon and uh, adjust how you want it to look. And this is the final product of it. I mean, it's really as easy as following those three steps, and then you can have nicely lined up text there in the uh, the text content section. This is really helpful. It kind of uh, helps you to avoid going doing any fancy HTML code to get the text to line up. It's just something that's built into the text content editor there. Um, yeah, so before we finish, I'd like to just thank everybody for uh, joining us for the webinar. We're about to open it up for some uh, questions here, so of course, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and put them into the question box there. I'll be sure to get to as many of them as I possibly can. And uh, of course, if you do have any questions, we're not able to get to you uh, in the allotted time, you can always feel free to give our passionate support team a call. Our number is one 866 463 7620. We're here Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so again, thanks everybody for joining and we'll go ahead and get to the questions. Okay, so um, the first question I see here is from Suzanne, and she is asking, can the search engines crawl the description in the list box? Thankfully, because the the store and the blog are completely HTML, everything can be crawled. So even whenever you're using those as links, they have the ability to go in and search those links as well. So all of that information is, is definitely crawlable by, by Google. Uh, the next question is coming from Corey, and the question is, what if I don't see Marquee Plus noted on my store settings? It only shows me having marquee pages. So whenever you first sign up with the store, you're just given a marquee page there. Under the web pages section for site layout, you do have the, um, the drop-down box there that's going to give you the option to add in multiple pages. So what all you have to do is drop that box down, and you will have an option that says Marquee Plus Page there. So what you do is just highlight that, then hit the plus sign. On the right-hand side, it's going to add that down at the very bottom for you. Uh, Corey, if you are having any, any problems with that at all, just feel free to um, give our support team a call, and we can definitely help you get all of that sorted out. Uh, the next question we have here is coming from Rebecca, and she asks, can you explain exactly what you would use the Marquee Plus page for? I'm a bit lost on why we would add this to the blog. Well, some of the great things about the Marquee Plus page is that it can be used as an information page. It can be used as um, a, a linking page to link to any external sources. So if you had a blog and you're not selling anything, you can add a, a Marquee Plus page and you know put some about me information in there. You also have the HTML section, so you can embed any kind of videos. You can embed contact forms. So if you wanted to make it like a, a contact page um, or a newsletter sign up page, um, and then you can of course use the links to link to other pages. So if you have, you know, your main website, you can link there. Or if you have a um, another friend with a blog and you can use this for like a, a networking section where you link to other friends' blogs and they link to yours. So it, it can be something that's helpful for link building, um, putting in any, any kind of embedded content and putting in any text as well. Uh, we, I do see your question there, um, Christina, and what I will do, um, I, I'll have one of our support agents contact you to go over that um, with you just so we can make sure that, that we get um, you taken care of with that. So I'll have somebody contact you here shortly. And does anyone else have any, any, any questions or anything that I can go over with you?
Yes, uh, definitely, Suzanne. Um, give me one second. Um, we'll just while we can wait and see if, if anybody else is pulling up um, any, any any extra questions, I can definitely pull up a nice example of a well used um, Marquee Plus page. Just give me one second here. Okay, so give me one second. I gotta see here. Make sure I can get the. Okay, hold on one second. Can can everybody see uh, the the website that I have pulled up? Okay, so yeah, look, looks like it's showing up now. So this is a great example of a marquee plus that that's put to great use. Um, you have the great logo at the top, you have the banner slideshow there, and also with that, this is it's a really great example of tables and, and how you can use the tabling text. Really, I mean, it, it's simple text there, but the layout makes it look fantastic. It's very easy to read. Um, also, as you can see here, you can link to the product section, the client login section, book a, ses book a session, or even contact. So really from the get-go clients come to the website this is the first page they see they can read some great information about yourself and from the go you can show them you can take them straight to book a session or have your clients log in contact or products so they're, they're not needing to kind of fumble around up here on the menu trying to see where to go you can instruct them where to go um, right off the bat which is a great feature of it Okay, hold on one second. Okay, so getting back to this now, um, I might have missed a question by somebody. Um, a question from uh, Andrea, uh, y yes, this will be on YouTube back in a couple of, uh, of days here. Um, I would probably give it till Monday or Tuesday. Um, it should definitely be on Tuesday by the latest. Okay, Lori, I, I see your uh, your question there. Um, and maybe a little bit of, of clarity on um, exactly what you're referring to. Are you referring to like the template size or how the text is laid out? Okay, the, the template size can be adjusted. Um, what I'll do is I'll have one of our support team members contact you to go over with you how to get all um, – of that change to work for the size that you want to use. Okay, well I don't see any more questions. Um, before we sign off here, does anybody else have any more um, questions? Andrea, yeah, yes, we we did go over um, the uh, the the HTML tables that are built into um, the the text content section. I, we didn't you actually don't need to use any kind of HTML code for that. Um, if you want, here I will take us back into the slideshow just so I can show you um, what the tables that are built in look like. So give me one second here. Okay, so let's take it from here then, guys. Okay, so this is the, um, the text content section. Um, so if, if you missed this, just to, you know, this is tools that are built in that 
take down on you guys having to look into any extra HTML coding or anything. So since you're asking about the, the tables, Andrea, um, the fifth item over, right beside where it says HTML, that is the table section. So that's what you can use to build in your text or, or build in anything into, into tables for the text content. After you click that, this is the box that is going to come up for you. So this is the general properties. You have columns, rows, cell padding, cell spacing, alignment, border, width, and height. So you can adjust how you want it to look by the number of columns, by how thick the padding is going to be between columns, um, and even wh where you want it aligned. One of the other great features with it is that you have the ability to change the color of it. So without using the color picker, you can individually for tables change the border and background color there, which you can use hex codes for, or you can use, as you can see, the arrow pointing to it, you can even use the, the color picker there for it. After you've inserted the table, this is how it's going to appear. So you'll have the two different columns there where you can put in text on either side so you can kind of see how the, the text is going to justify itself. So it's, it's really, really easy to go in there and then add that text in. And then this is, this is the final view of it. So after you get the, the table added in there and then after you put the text in, this is how it's going to appear on um, your page. Now to get more space in between it, that's where the cell spacing would come into play. So you can put between 0 and 999 in there to um, adjust how much room is going to be in between those cells. Um, is, is that covered okay for you, Andre? you have any specific questions or anything? A table for links, you, you can actually, now, I, I don't have any examples that I can think of off the, the top of my head. Um, but if I can go back to this, this one right here. So in each text content section, when you're, actually typing. So if you look on either of those two columns there, you can put um, a, a hyperlink in there. So you can hyperlink out from each column. Um, so if you want to link to like Facebook or if you want to link to a printer or you know any extra link that, that you want to link to, you can um, use a hyperlink in there, which is the one, two, three, four, the tenth item over. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so you're you're referring to links then. So the the link boxes and how they're sorted. Okay, hey, um so the the hold on text table and insert links. Okay, are are you referring to these links here? Okay, so there, there are different layouts that you can use um, for the links to where they're right aligned or they're aligned on the bottom. It, it's something that's just built into the, the layout. So you, you can use those for text, you can use those for just images, or you can use them to link out. Well, there the, are the layouts within the template. So each individual store and each individual blog template um, has the the marquee plus page so each marquee plus page has multiple different layouts where these are actually built in so there's this isn't anything extra that you have to do um, I'll go back up here this is this is what it it looks like on the marquee plus page these are called list items so all you would do is go to the marquee plus page select list items hit where it says add item and that's going to bring you here where you can put in a title for it, a description, you can choose where it wants to link, and also upload an image to that as well.
Okay, awesome. Um, and then I see that uh, Gene also ha had a question. Um, this asking is the Marquee Plus only for blog and store. Currently, the Marquee Plus page is only a, a page that that we do have in the blog and the store. I, I do not know if we plan on moving it elsewhere. I don't think we do, but it's definitely something that I'm more than happy to pass along to our team for you. And one last call for questions before we get signed off here. Okay, everybody. Well, uh, again, my name is Vance with our passionate support team at, at, here at PhotoBiz, and I definitely want to thank you for coming out to my webinar here. It will be available online at our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash PhotoBiz, probably by Monday or Tuesday. And, of course, if, if you do have any other questions coming from this, just feel free to give our support team a call here, and we'll, we'll definitely be able to answer any questions that you might have. Hope everybody has a, a wonderful day.